so it's so lovely to see you all. I mean, I've, I, I logged on this morning, so I'm currently in, uh, in California, which means that when um, Emma was speaking in the morning, um, I was fast asleep. I was in my dream world. Um, so I, I, I have a feeling, and I logged on to Swami's meditation, that, that you know, it's been a big, it's a big day. It was a heavy day. There's a lot of things that, you know, we, we've been reassessing. You know, mental health is, is an incredible journey because mental health is actually not mental health. It's self-awareness. You see, it's how do we create a relationship with ourselves? And I'm going to share a bit of my story um, so that you understand um, how this journey of my life has come into, into action. Because living is being in action. How can we be in action? How can we manifest who we are in this body that we are given? So as some of you know, I'm an actor. And I was very lucky uh, to realize that that's something, it's the instrument of my body um, that I wanted to use. Because I realized that it's the perfect tool to explore the human mind, our diversity. It's like being a translator of emotions for an audience. You know, it's like being at the crux of the worlds, the imaginary world, which is everything that we don't see. We all have imaginary worlds. We all have minds. We all have so many thoughts. We have infinite horizons that are beyond even our comprehension, right? And then we have this stage, this stage that is the world that we perceive each other in, right? So I just want to, you know, I, I want to start on what Swami actually said this morning, well, this evening for you, this morning for me. Um, you know, he said the sage is shaking right now. We're on a stage that is shaking right now. And I think that how do we find that inner, inner strength, that inner awareness, that foundation, that inner foundation that, yeah, the stage is, is, is shaking, but you know what? I'm the rock star in the middle of it and I'm experiencing it all fully. I'm fully embracing everything. You know, the art form of acting, you understand that, wow, human behavior is at the center of our perception. That's what we are. This world is a stage. Shakespeare said it very, very well. We're all actors and this is a dream and the world is a stage. So right now we're in this beautiful collective dream. And right now we're experiencing tremendous um, earth elements that are shifting and shaking our stages, you know. And it's a beautiful time. It's, it is a beautiful time. It's a beautiful time where we're challenged to recreate a relationship with self. So my journey started um, when I was 18. And when I say my journey started, um, my life started at 18. Obviously I was born at zero plus minutes. So I had an 18 year old life before that. But when I say my new life started when I was 18, I was awakened to a new reality. And that reality happened when the world shook, when I didn't understand that the, the world I was living in anymore. And it was a shock. It came like a tsunami, a tsunami of tears, a tsunami of emotions, the earth splitting open and me not understanding the systems that we're born into. And it happened very simply due to the fact that I was kidnapped and experienced a physical form of abuse that, you know, nowadays we would call rape. At that time, I had no idea. I had absolutely no idea what and how this could happen to human beings. When it happens to yourself, you are put in a situation where you see reality through these eyes, through our five senses. That's how we perceive the world we live in. And my perception now of the world was <gasps> bruised. It was, it felt hurt. It was, it, was cons it was constrained. And I didn't understand how that, you know, how I could liberate from that. 
because I was very happy before this happened. I was extremely abundant in smiles and laughs and, you know, traveling and mind traveling and being free, walking barefoot, you know, in the rain. I made a big point about that, by the way. I was always the barefoot girl walking in the rain and my hair drenched, you know, <laughs> and I just loved it because I didn't care. I was experiencing that freedom. And all of a sudden I felt that I couldn't be that person who I was anymore because something happened. And that something that happened was like, wow, okay. I want to be who I was before, but I know that if I'm experiencing this pain, then millions and millions of girls and boys are experiencing something similar. And I had no idea before. I was ignorant. You know, when we're in our own worlds, we, we are ignorant. Ignorant doesn't mean we're dumb or stupid or ignorance. It means that we just haven't seen. We're just not aware of the true reality. So one thing led to another, and I was trying to find the root of my suffering. Now, the root of suffering, obviously, one could say, hey, well, the root of your suffering is in that occurrence. It's in the, the event that happened. It's in that rape. It's in that situation. It's in that place. And I was like, yes, but hold on a second. It's in the past. So technically, I am not, I'm not living in the past. I'm in the present. And yet my mind, the root is dragging me back to that event. And I realized that, that my presence was now polluted with something that I wasn't technically experiencing in the present. So I was looking for the root, and the root obviously was in my mind because physical ailments I didn't have anymore. Um, I didn't have all these things that, um, that were scars, physical scars anymore, but my mind had scars. And I was determined, and I'm still determined today, because my whole work now, my whole life journey is mental health and mental hygiene. Um, and the, day, the, the name of the talk today is like mental hygiene, a toolkit to human kindness, you see, are, that are in our minds. And they can be repeated over time. But if we don't know how to find that sense of healing in the root, how can we be the expression, the full expression of ourselves? And our full expression is ultimately to be with one another, to experience one another as oneself. And that's human kindness. It's ultimately, you know, Amma, um, obviously you all know, I'm presuming you've all experienced Amma's hug and embrace and darshan. And it's the, it's the togetherness. It's the kindness. It's the, what do we do to serve? How can we be of more service? You are beautiful young adults here. And at the same time, I had these same questions when I was 18. I'm now 38, so it's 20 years ago. And I started by a beautiful journey, actually, and maybe one day there'll be a film made about it, not because it's my story, just because it's a beautiful journey. Um, but one thing led me to another where I was like, okay, I cannot stay in this physical place where it happened. I need to heal. I need to find the root. So I took, I literally took a map. I was like, where am I going? Where can I go? And I wanted to go on the other side of the earth, which was New Zealand. And by the way, New Zealand today in this crisis is number one. There's a reason for that. <laughs> Great leadership, compassionate heart, and really reflective collective mind. And that's what they're doing there right now in New Zealand. But I went there 20 years ago. And I wanted to be on the other side of the earth to see if my pain was in that, was I was still experiencing it there. Obviously, I was still experiencing pain there because pain I realized was in the mind. One thing led to another. I, uh, you know, when we experience trauma, we, we can't really look at ourselves. We can't, it was very hard to look in the mirror. And for a young lady, um, you know, we all, we, we all look at, um, you know, ourselves in the mirror. We, we experience our changing bodies. You know, we, we want to, you know, we're, we're playing in, with our own image. So I couldn't look in the mirror at that time. 
and I was stuck in a house because I was scared. I was afraid. I was truly ingrained in, in, in that um, scared mindset. I was afraid of stalkers. I was afraid of men. I was, didn't want men to look at me. I didn't want to even interact with anyone that I felt could see inside because I was ashamed. Because I was ashamed because I just didn't know how to deal with this thing that had happened. And I was ashamed because I couldn't be the person who I wanted to be. I didn't have the tools, the tools. So because we believe in synchro destiny here, and I believe that we're always, when we have the will and the intention, there is always a gift that shows up in hidden, hidden, hidden um, costumes. You know, if we look at this as life. Right now, I'm the actor of my life. So I am the actor, the main lead actor on this stage. And my character, Gabriella, when she was 18 years old, was all of a sudden looking at a local gazette. You know a local gazette newspaper? You know those little cheap, they, they, they come in through the mail and they're, you know, they're free. I, by the way, I was a student, had no money whatsoever. I had made money by babysitting in Paris and obviously that had gone into my air flight uh, to get to New Zealand. Luckily enough, my grandparents had a house there. They don't live there anymore. So I was able to, you know, uh, feel that, you know, have that uh, home, at least there was a physical home, but I had no home inside. I wasn't, I didn't find home here. So the paper came through the mail. I look at the front and it says, free, your mind, body, and spirit. And at that point, I'm like, wow, free your mind? Yes, I want to free, I didn't even know I had a mind. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know I had a mind. Your body, okay, I get that, I, I understand that because that's what we use and that's what we have. And I suppose I was abused, so yeah, I wanna free that too. And then spirit, and I was like, I have no idea. Spirit? absolutely no clue what that was, but it resonated. And like a gift coming through the mail, which it was, I called, I called this number. And the number um, was answered by a Chinese woman. And she's like, yeah, of course you come here. We teach you just come. I was like, but what is it? What free? No, it's okay. It's free for you. I was like, I have no money. No, it's free for you. You come Central Park. And I was like, okay. This sounds very bizarre. Sorry, I apologize if I butchered that Chinese accent, but it was truly close to that. Um, and so I show up and I show up and there's a, a, a man literally sitting in lotus position under a tree in the middle of a shopping center on a patch of grass. And I'm like, okay, this is rather embarrassing. There must be a hidden camera. At that time, there were still hidden camera shows. And I was like, there must be a hidden camera. This is a crank. Prank. It's not possible. Why is there a guy sitting like as if he's some child in the middle of a shopping center with people walking around and noise? And it was just very distracting. I didn't understand. And there was this strange like little music on this radio, the portable cassette player, you know, tapes. You don't have that. You have MP3s and no, actually you have, yeah, you do digital stuff. So anyway, um, I remember looking at this surreal scene and it was the scene that was, was really going to change my life. And he didn't speak English and I still don't speak Chinese. And he, um, just asked me, he just said, sit. And so I sat and he, and he was just like, close your eyes. I closed my eyes. And as I closed my eyes, I started to feel things that I before. I just slowly started to become in touch with an inner, you know, the inner dialogue that was haunting me. I could finally witness it. And I didn't know that was meditation. I, re I had no clue that what he was telling me to do was a form of meditation. All I knew was I was gonna copy this man and just be exactly like him. And in the beginning, I was closing my eyes and I was opening them and I was, I could see guys walk around and I still had, you know, 
all these scares and I was scared of being in a public place. I was already scared of being in public anyway because of my personal journey and the trauma that I needed to overcome. And that was my will. I wanted to overcome. I really wanted to live a happy life. And I was determined to get there. And for some reason, because of that newspaper, the front page saying, free your mind, body, and spirit, and it was free, thank God for that, I was able to tune in to a new tool of awareness. And so what happened was, is that every day, I went there, two hours in the park, two hours in the park, and I remember the end of the journey, because the journey, you know, has a time, um, I was there as long as I, I could, but it happened to be three month period. And at the ending of that three month period, I remember feeling the, the, the speed almost of the blood going through my veins. And there was no mantra technique, there was no science, there was no reading scripture, there was nothing of all that. It was just presence of being. And it's very strange. I realized that, you know, at the end I was doing meditation, but during the whole three months I had no idea. I just knew that every time I walked home, I felt stronger. Every time I walked back alone to the house, I was less afraid. I was less, I was not looking over my shoulder anymore. I wasn't dressing like a boy so much. And slowly I was rediscovering parts of myself that were healing that I didn't even know were healing. They just flourished. You see like these flowers at the back? They just flou flourished. All of a sudden I was experiencing something that was beyond my mind, that was beyond my expectations. Everything that I ever wanted was happening without me knowing. And that was, that's what was really beautiful because you fine tune your awareness. And awareness itself is something that is infinite when you get into that. And all of a sudden you become part of that infinite. So, I mean, it's a long story. Um, one thing led to another and I was able to study Tibetan Buddhism. And a couple of years later, I met Amma. So I met Amma uh, 15, my son's 16. So 16 years ago, I have a 16 year old, by the way. Um, I had him when I was 21. So um, all that to say is that mental, what I was able to do is that at a very young age, like you all, I was able to create tools that allowed me to create a hygiene for myself, a, 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 a rhythm that allowed me to respect my inner workings that we all have. I just didn't know that there was something to do with it. I didn't know we needed to have mental hygiene. See, mental hygiene, you know, Emma, I, I heard that she said it earlier through Swamiji, and what Swamiji was saying is that we have these, these priorities. Everything that we see right now is physical, right? Everything that we perceive is through our five senses. But how do we create a relationship with ourself that is beyond the physical? And that's where self-awareness comes in. That's where our mental hygiene is as important as our physical hygiene. And some people don't even take care of the physical hygiene. And by the way, that's detrimental to our also mental hygiene. You see, the mind, body, spirit, the mind, our infinite potential of being who we need to be to path, to break through these patterns, to break through the traumas that sometimes we're born into. We're born into generational trauma. We're born into very deconstructed families. We're born into a deconstructed society. We're born into, you know, manipulated religion. We're born into preconditioned circumstances. So there's that. But then there's, you know, the body. How do we expand our body? How do we become safe in this home that is physical? In Buddhism, we say that it's this precious body because it's the vehicle of the mind and it's the vehicle how can we can 
access beyond the mind. It's how can we access who we truly are, that pure potentiality. So with this seed that I planted, well, that got planted, I didn't plant it. The seed got planted and it's blossoming over the, you know, the next 20 years of my life. So from 18 to 38, self-awareness, without knowing, I was creating mental hygiene to navigate the world. You know, one trauma can be one thing, but then there's motherhood. How do we get into motherhood? How do you, you know, go through postpartum depression that nobody speaks about? How do we go through, you know, the experience of the loss of the people you love? How do we go through all these things that can shake the stage, like Swamiji said? How do we create a toolkit that shifts our awareness so we know how to navigate? There's not just one thing in life that can change life. Every single second, we have a moment that can change our lives forever. And it can keep on changing. That's what's beautiful, is that we're moving bodies, we're moving minds, we're moving entities into an infinite source of possibilities. So we're story makers. We definitely are story makers. And that's why you know, I'm giving the workshop tomorrow. Um, to go back to why I'm here, I, obviously personal journey is why we're all here. We're all here because we have personal journeys. And that personal journey has brought us right into the Zoom call. And now we're interacting digitally, you know, through different time zones, experiencing one another in our presence. And it's a new way of communicating. This is going to be a new world for a while. So I co-founded the mental um, health movement called Never Alone with Dr. Deepak Chopra, who you probably know. I didn't even know he wrote 90 books. Seriously, like, that's like a lot, okay? I'm writing one, it's taking me forever, okay? <laughs> so, like, seriously, okay, so he's 74 years old. It's like, you know, I'm uh, giving darshan to 50 million people, Deepak writing 90 books, okay? You know, some people are earthlings, like, like I am. <laughs> And we do, we, we are storytellers. So I'm a storyteller. So as a co-founder of Never Alone, I decided that we needed to move people into action. How do we move people into the experience of compassion? You know, when you see Amo, or when you see people or saints or, you know, Mother Teresa, people, they, you, we're moved by them. We're moved by their presence because they're doing things that are beyond, you know. But how do we trigger the empathy in us? Children have more empathy, thank God, um, than most adults. Because by the time we're an adult, all the preconditions, all society, we, we kind of believe the rules. We believe these rules that can be very, very um, uninspiring to say the least. They numb our emotions. I think emotions are beautiful. Emotions are tools that we can flow and ride on. Doesn't mean we need to be carried away by them, but we need to be triggered by them so that they can awaken um, us to a new reality. So to, there are so many things that I can share with you and I can go on for hours, but I know we only have 45 minutes. So uh, within that, and you've had a very long day. So I'm going to show you, um, it's, we, I have a special code for you um, that you can actually see this film for free. Um, it's called, um, it's, the film is called I Am Never Alone. So I play the mother who loses her son to suicide. And uh, the director shot it in a very raw style. Um, because he wanted to actually lessen the gap between the audience, the experiencer, and the story. It's everything that I just told you. It's how do we create empathy? How are we moved into being in action and being of service and being, you know, a vehicle for love? So um, I'm trying to be technical here. You would think that as an actress, I'm a tech geek, but I am not. I have people who do that for me <laughs> normally. So I'm going to share this, this teaser. I'm going to give you the code that you can look. By the way, the director's uh, 
COVID cut. So it's part documentary, part narrative. The director's cut that he's finishing is only narrative. But for COVID, he designed a, uh, a film that's got storytelling, people's um, personal stories like you and I, but also intertwined with the narrative. I am a meditation teacher for the parolees in Los Angeles at Amity Foundation. I got into meditation because I was looking for a solution to not physical pain, but mental pain. Of course, at the beginning, we don't realize that life's going to change. Can you give me a kiss? He was perfect at school. He loved his friends. He just thought he was happy. My dreams were nightmares, recurring nightmares of the things that I just couldn't do, the things that I couldn't change. I um, opened the door to his room. And uh, there he was, trying to feel his heartbeat, and uh, there was nothing. Then the wisdom traditions of the world say that every every experience, including the most tragic experiences, are meant to expand our consciousness. Principle is this: potential is always bigger than the problem. You know, people are still fascinated with the near-death experience. Well, I challenge you to get behind the near-life experience. It makes me almost angry to not know what to do with the ashes. Yes, I, I think that he's really telling you the answer, and, and the answer is that he wants to go back home. introduction to um, the movement. The movement is so much more and the resources you can see. We did a three-day summit during uh, COVID stricter times. Um, there was 105 speakers. It's free. It's on demand. You can go there whenever you want, find all the tools you need. Um, and it's, it's your movement. When I say it's yours, it's because it needs to, today, Every 40 seconds, someone dies by suicide. Uh, you know, the pandemic is one thing on our physical health, but our mental health is now becoming um, the issue of a larger pandemic because it's an invisible one. And no one needs to be invisible in this world. We are here for each other. We are here to develop tools to allow us to read the silence behind the words. And that comes from, you know, self-awareness the beautiful mental hygiene that you fine tune for yourself. You know, that you, who are you really? You know, what is reality? Why are we experiencing these things? These are fundamental um, questions that are important for our humanity, truly for the sustainability of our own species. And it's time, and it's thanks to 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 you really i i mean i have a 16 year old and i am feeling eternal youth through him because that is the heartbeat you are the heartbeat of our future and it's there's so much to do you know yeah my son i told him to join by the way he's in paris hanging out with friends in a bar i know tell me about it i'm not so happy but he loves Swami G. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not drinking, although he might, I don't know, but no, no, no. Um, you know, we have a wonderful connection. Actually, my son and I, we meditate a lot together. We do 
and uh, he has created his own mental hygiene. Um, when he was here, he goes to Los Angeles. He was here. He um, it was very funny. He started waking up very early, and I was like. God, he's waking up 5 a.m. He has to take the bus at like 6.45. I was like, why are you waking up at 5? And he's like, I go meditate. I was like, oh, really? Okay. Well, I meditate at 8 a.m. Sorry. <laughs> so he created this own thing out of his own will. I didn't force him to. I just gave him the elements. And you see, you know, you never know when things happen. So it's your secret garden. It's your secret toolbox. And you can share the toolbox um, with the people you love. And then you can, you know, make it your mission um, to be of service because it's, it's our mission right now. We've got to save each other through this insanity. We're all in it together. And there are so many things to do and so many possibilities of, of creating that beautiful family around the world. You know, I think what's beautiful here is to really realize that, you know, the world is a stage and this is a dream. But let's upgrade the illusion. Let's upgrade this dream. Let's really create tremendous ways of, of creating a better dream for all of us, the collective dream, you see. It's, it's, it's so fun. I mean, I'm 38 and I'm having so much fun and I've had so much drama. And by the way, Swamiji knows that because whenever I have a drama, hello. <laughs> Hello, what am I doing now? Yeah, you should come to the ashram. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> There's a very interesting question here, I think, from Gaurang. He says, at age 18, what would you have liked others of your age to have done for you? You know what? What would have I liked others of my age have done for me? You know what? I was alone. I was alone when I was 18. I was alone. Wow, I just realized that. Thank you, you just made me uh, distinguish something. I was alone when I was 18. And by the way, my movement's called Never Alone. So obviously that must have been deeply, <laughs> deeply traumatizing for me. <laughs> so thank you for asking the right question that has now um, made me reflect on that. I think I, I just shouldn't have been alone but I went to find strangers, gentle strangers to guide me along the way. And uh, I think what we could do now for each other is, you know what's very important? I realize this. When you experience so much trauma suddenly, there's not one word and there's not anything that you can say to make that person feel better. But what you can do is just be present just be present, just experience presence. And what helped me, you know, for example, this is, you know, personal. So obviously my parents knew what happened to me, you know, they, they, they knew. They, but what happened was, is because they're my loved ones, because they're the people you love the most, they're your safe space, it wasn't safe anymore. Because as I looked at them, I could see the reflection of my pain. And when I wanted to look at them, I wanted to see them. I didn't want to see my pain. I just didn't want to. So that's why I had to remove myself from that Sangha, the family, and I needed others. So the advice is be there, be present, but just be present. Because ultimately you'll never understand what the other one is going through, but by your presence, you're able to shift awareness for the other one. You're able to create a safe place. And that's what this Chinese master under a tree, I know, sounds very Forrest Gumpy, but it's true. And that's what he was able to do to me. He didn't know anything of my story. He actually didn't even care about my story. Even if he heard it, I'm sure. And by the way, when Swami hears my stories, he's like, well, okay. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> It's, it's like, it's okay. And it's actually better that we're not engaging in the story. Because you know what? We've got to be the audience of our story. If we're in the story all the time, then everyone gets involved in the tragedy. Right? It's, 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 it's good. So be present. 
just just present and just be you. And when you're empowered by being you, then the other person gets out of their thing that trauma is a funk. I'm just saying that you have to shift your awareness. You see, you gotta shift it. So yeah. Very true. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Does somebody else want to, you know, switch off their mic, switch on their mic and and say something? I see a lot of ladies here. Yeah, where are all yes. the guys at? Come on. Yeah, I'm like, seriously, guys. I mean, I have a son, okay? I get they're out drinking at bars, but, you know, <laughs> like... <laughs> this, is, this is your opportunity, please, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Somebody want to say something? It's okay. Well, I have a question for okay. you. If nobody says anything, um, I just, for me, I would ask you maybe for some advice to, um, because I mean, in 20 years, when you were 18, you were in that situation, mm -hmm. um, which I find that it was very like difficult situation and how like in 20 years you have, you know, gone all this way, which is really impressive. And um, I find it sometimes really hard to, to, to make your dreams come true somehow, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, personally, it's very inspiring to hear you from you because it's like something that I, you know, I aspire to somehow, but it's, it's like, how do you go from dreaming or from wanting to be of service to actually, yeah, to doing that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe you can say something about that because I think we're all here, we want to do that. <laughs> That's why we're here. You know what's interesting? That's a, first of all, that's a really good question. Um, by the way, my I'm still dreaming of what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> it's an everlasting dream. So what I said earlier, how do we upgrade our dream? How do we upgrade the illusion? You know. Um, so when I when this thing happened to me, when I say this thing, because object of existence, you know. We can't, let, let's not put too much, you know, let's not give an Oscar to the trauma. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like, okay, it happened. Great. Thank you. Next. You know what I mean? We put too much relevance on stuff. And of course we need to put relevance on stuff to move consciousness, to move us into action as a collective. But on a personal level, the more we can get over it with self-love, attention, self-awareness, the better it is. We don't want to recycle a story over time. It gets very, very boring for oneself and for the others who are listening. I'm telling you. So what's very important is that when this happened to me, I was like, shit, literally, sorry, I swore. But I was like, shit, oh my God, if I'm experiencing this, then what about the women in India? I had never been to India, by the way, never. And I was like, we need to help the women in third world countries. At the time, it was politically correct to say third world, now it's developing nations. But in my 18-year-old voice, it was, what? What about all these women in third world countries who don't have a voice, who don't have a political system and a structure and a society to help them? So what happened was, as I addressed that question, I started manifesting my future because actually when we ask questions, the answer is in how we live it. So all of a sudden I, I started manifesting my future without knowing it became, um, a necessity for me, a necessity that all women be heard. It became a necessity to do everything for that. And to the point where, you know, when I got married, my ex-husband, this, that, blah, blah, blah. He's now my ex-husband. Um, but they were like, wow, you're obsessed with helping the world. I'm like, well, yes. I'm like, yes, I have to be. I have, to. It's, a, it's an obsession. And it's not I'm going around, you know, with the, my own cardboard in my own house, free women's. I'm not, I'm not doing that, okay? I'm not, it's not that. But... You create, you know, when we talk about Siva, 
selfless service. It's the more selfless you are, the more your dreams become real. Because you are connecting to something that is beyond your identity. It's not Gabrielle is doing this. It's Gabrielle is part of the journey with the collective. And sometimes we need leaders. And sometimes we change roles. That's, you know, what we're going to explore tomorrow. The more we free freer from who we are, the identity that we might have constructed, that's how you're able to manifest your dreams. And by the way, my dreams are still manifesting. You know, Never Alone is, is, is another child from that. Um, you know, mental health, I never thought that I would get into that. I never thought I would get into mental health. And that's another personal story. And here we go again, you know? You see, it's like every, everyone has a story. But how do we transcend our stories so that we can create these gems that we leave for the legacy of humanity? So, so I think if everyone's okay, we can keep this going for two last questions yes. just because I can see everyone's really engaged. And I, it's, I don't, I don't, I don't want to end this yet. I'm sorry. Sorry, don't really <laughs> keep you. We said 45 minutes. Oh, it's so. okay. I'm just going to meditate oh. after this. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have Sarah and, and Darcy, yeah? Just do we want to... Guys, unmute yourself. And... Go ahead. Hi, um, thank you so much for your talk. It was really inspiring and funny and true and real. I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, so I was uh, wondering, um, I'm also not sure if I missed it somehow, what, what um, because the Never Alone movement is more for suicide prevention, correct? It's mental well-being and suicide prevention. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because I was wondering um, if uh, you got in touch with suicide as well, either for your for yourself or yes. with someone else. Okay. Because I was wondering how yes. how yes. is that interlinked? Because for me, I was, I was, yes. <laughs> I I completely yeah. well. That's okay. So I'm going to answer that question very very simply. Um, and it's very personal and it's very raw. And uh, it's raw because it happened to my sister. I lost my little sister to suicide two years ago. And it's, that's another thing. It rocked my, it rocked my world. It rocked my world. It changed my, you know, when that's, that's, that's another part of the journey that I share, you know, with Never Alone um, and more in depth. Uh, that's why 45 minutes is never enough. But, but um, you see, I can smile about it now, meaning I'm not smiling that I lost my sister. I'm not smiling at all. But my blind spot, you see, my, it, she was my blind spot. And we had an incredible relationship to the point where, you know, we, she attempted suicide seven years ago. Um, no, actually nine years ago, and we saved her. And what happened was she was triggered by, she got spiked, you know? You know how people spike each other, whatever they do. I don't drink, but you know, these are, these are. And, and it triggered a neurochemical reaction. And that chemical reaction in, in the tool, that is the brain, um, met, led her to believe that she couldn't hear her notes anymore. She was a musician and you might know her or not, uh, Paulette Wright. Um, her music is beyond. You can find it on iTunes, Spotify. Um, and so she couldn't, so it took her six months to come back to who she is, to who she was. And then unfortunately, due to circumstances, she was alone two years ago. I was actually with Amma in Los Angeles. So as my sister was dying, I was with Amma. Um, and she had an acute crisis that led her um, to her own liberation that was unfortunate for us. I don't know how she feels now, but I know she's sky flying and she's probably my guardian angel for this because it was my blind spot. You know, mental health was, I didn't realize that mental health was an issue because I just didn't know. I, I had always put a mental health as the outcome of self-awareness. 
you know, self-awareness is what we speak about a lot, is our spiritual tools, our things. And that's why when my, this happened to my sister, obviously deep grief for everyone. And everyone in my family looked to me, you have a solution. I'm like, I don't think I have a solution right now. I have to experience grief. I need to be in the grief to know what to do. And then things occurred, you know, like the newspaper that came through the door. Um, that's, that's what happened and synchronicity in this film that, you know, I was making and all of a sudden I interviewed Deepak Chopra. He wants to be involved. And now we co-found this movement because there's a necessity, there's a need. When there's a need, things occur. And people who are in tune with that need and who are humble. When I say humble, humble is not, oh, I'm playing humble. Humble is knowing that there are, there are blind spots that we all have. And my sister right in front of me was my blind spot. And it was the most humbling experience in my life. Because when rape happens to you, it's someone that you don't know. Or, I mean, it, no, it, it can happen to, uh, but in my situation, it was someone I didn't know. Um, but when this happens in, in my awareness and I couldn't foresee it, I felt that I failed. And that for someone who's on the path to serve, to be of service was really hard for me. Very hard. It's still hard. You know, it's still very fresh, but I'm healing through the collective healing through never alone because I'm not alone. Literally, I'm not alone. So, there you go. Um, wow. Oh my God, um, I'm the other person who wanted to ask a question. Um, oh this, God. wow, this talk has been absolutely incredible and so powerful. And I just want to say thank you so much. I think mm -hmm. everyone in the chat has been saying how amazing it is. And just thank you so much for sharing yeah. yourself so honestly. Um, my question is, um, I've got a friend who right now is going through some very, very difficult times, a lot of traumas, and everyone in, like, she's living in a house with a few other people, and everyone in that house is going through the same traumas. Mm -hmm. And so in those traumas, they're all kind of together, and obviously I can't see her because it's corona times. Mm. Um, and so I was wondering, do you have any kind of advice on how to support a friend who's having a difficult time with their mental health when you can't physically see them? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, where are you located? Glasgow, Scotland. Um, and your friend, where is she located? Also Glasgow, just, also Glasgow. yeah. And may I ask, here. Just, I'm just asking because she's in a house with collective trauma. Everyone's going through the same trauma at the same time. They all lost a friend this week. And also they've had other traumas recently, but they all lost a good friend this week. Mm. The same person, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, so. You know, it's, it's such a, 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 it, you know, it's like what I say. It's very, when things are fresh, it's very, very hard to, to even want to say something because we all want to say it's going to be all right. It's, it's not when you're, when you're in pain, you're in pain and, and we have to, you know, there's no mental health specialist, mental health advocate that's going to say, Hey, there's a magical thing here, you know? Uh, uh, so, but it, 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 what we can do is really create a sense of, um, you know, presence can go beyond just physical presence. You know, presence is something that you can experience. Like I'm experiencing you all right now and I'm very moved. I'm literally moved to tears. If your friend, um, you know, can, can experiencing you, you're very pure, Darcy. Sorry, I mean, I don't know you, but you're just like, you've just got such this light bubble coming out of your... Who, who you are, it's beautiful. You've got a lot of emanation and it's, I love that. And, and that's who you need to be for your friend. You know, there's things that, you know, there are practical things as well, but I like starting with the human thing. You know, the human heart can heal beyond. I, you know, I obviously, you know, meditation, there are so many forms of meditation that you can do, but I think that you can, as a friend, 
create that space for her because you asked me the question. So you're actually the solution here. Do you understand? And I think that if you can create um, that safety, just, you know, have, just be with her on Zoom, with her talking, you know, share, you know, you can share the story of the talk today, for example, very simple. You know, I can, you can watch the film with her. I'll send you, you know, we're going to send you the link. Little things like that gentleness, tenderness, you know, really happens, but also something that really works for me on a more practical level, using what we have. You know, mental hygiene is we have to use what we have. Right now, we're on a sinking Titanic. We're all sinking. Um, apparently, one survives, Leo DiCaprio. Actually, no, he dies. The other, no, no, who, no, he does die. No, he's alive. He's alive. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's like, but we're all, you know what I mean? So we're on the sinking Titanic that's collective grief right now. We're all experiencing a collective grief. So we need to wash ourselves. We need to cleanse ourselves. So what do we use that... Um, a practical shower, showers, showers, baths, you know, use it as a, as, a, as a tool. Our tears that, you know, so use the, cleanse the elements. So cleanse, so the elements are very important because they, they, uh, they kill, they're the vehicle to our emotions, right? So um, when you wash your hands, we have to do it anyway because of Corona. Hi guys, super important. So <laughs> when we wash our hands and we combine it with breath, breath is prana. Obviously, you know this already. Um, prana regulates our thoughts, right? Regulates our thoughts. So when we consciously breathe in to a movement, we're regulating our thoughts and giving space to our thoughts, right? So... I can go on for hours, but I'm just going to give you very, very simple things. So use what you have. If you're crying a lot, if she needs to just tear out and cleanse her tears, tears are not bad. Tears are part of the process of grieving. Tears are he here to cleanse our eyes, to cleanse our view perception. We get a new perception of reality after we cry. We feel better. We do. We do. We just do. It's part of the process. So once you're able to, you know, and, and combine that with breath, the emotions, once they're located on the body, you know, you fine tune your awareness. Where am I hurting right now? Generally, it's generally always the heart. It's just that area that takes a lot, takes a lot. So you, you know, close your eyes and, you know, the, the, the pain where it is. Breathe into it. And when you breathe in, you're breathing in the pain of it, like in a form of a, it's, it's a technique called tonglen. It's a Buddhist technique, actually. You breathe in this kind of smoky, dark, kind of like heavy incense. You're breathing it in, but in your heart area, you actually have the power of transformation. So you breathe it out and everything that you don't want anymore, you're breathing it out. So you're fully embracing it by breathing it in, and you're breathing it out because you don't want it anymore. And you combine it with water, especially because water is emotions, it's the ocean, it's our body is 80% water. It's, what, it's the frequency that we're in. But most importantly for you, Darcy, for your friend, um, and I can tell that you love her. You are right now. You're an incredible light. And that presence doubled with you know, storytelling and sharing and shifting that person's awareness slowly. Grief takes time and we have to respect the human time. But if you add elements and use what you have, water, fire, use all the elements, wind, be in the nature, just even your head out the window, there's wind and just feel that on you, you know, slowly calming the thoughts and the thoughts are washing away. An active response to that self-awareness. Use what you have. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's funny you talk about the ocean because we both study marine science and that's how we know each other. I love that. I love that. My mother was a marine biologist, so. <gasps> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you. I think